In today's video, we will be taking an unboxing and overview of the B450M Pro VDH Max AM4 motherboard. So as I said, let's take a little unboxing now of this motherboard and then I'll give you a little overview and we'll just go from there. Now, to be honest, this was a used deal which I got from Amazon Warehouse. It's kind of rattling a little bit, which is a little bit concerning, but hey ho. So I only paid £45 for this actually which I think is actually quite a bargain really, which when you consider mobile prices are kind of like 50 pounds and above, even for AM4 currently, I think to get this for only 45 pounds is a pretty, pretty decent deal. So let's have a look here. Obviously this is you, so it's not gonna be like your new unboxing where it's all nicely packaged and everything, but hey, we have, well, we've got a speaker here with a load of sort of screws and stuff, but Anyway, let's move that aside. We do have an IO shield, so that's obviously a good plus. We do have one SATA cable. It looks like the other one's been used, but never mind. Oh, it's actually here in the box still, which is okay. <laughs> it's all a bit of a funny unboxing this one, but hey-ho. We've got a load of random sort of case screws here, which obviously the person who <laughs> previously had this and obviously returned it is kind of... Just put it in for little bonuses, hey? <laughs> Always nice, a little obviously thank you MSI leaflet. Um, we do have our M.2 screw, so that's obviously really handy to have. Sometimes those screws get lost, which, you know, is a little bit annoying. Still here for things rattling around. Let me have a look at that once I've just taken out the mold board now. Still got a couple of case screws, which yeah, it's, it's all handy having a couple of screws uh, to, for spare. Obviously, we have our True Gaming MSI badge. Yes, I mean I've done. <laughs> I've done. This is actually this. Um, this is the second video in two weeks I'll be doing on MSI. So MSI, if you're watching, hit me up. But anyway, let's move on. We all have a AMD driver, motherboard driver, sort of beer coaster CD, whatever you want to call it and our quick installation guide but obviously we're here for the motherboard so let's do that so let's take the motherboard out and have a look at it and more screws fall out again <laughs> this is a bit of a bizarre one but anyway let's forget the screws let's put them to the side and let's let's crack on with this mobile eh? um so we do actually have the mountain back brackets for the aim4 uh aim4 socket which is obviously nice uh, these dims are actually not closed, but anyway, <laughs> hopefully this motherboard does work, obviously, but we'll, we shall see. Now, let's take an overview. I'll go from top left, kind of work down to bottom left, and we'll just sort of talk about my motherboard. Hopefully you can see that on camera. I probably will do a couple of close-ups just so you can see that a bit better, but anyway, let's crack on. So our 8-pin CPU supplementary power here for our EPS power. Uh, right in the top left hand corner there. The VRMs do have a heatsink here where it says max here at the side. There is a little VRM heatsink but the ones at the top are kind of exposed and it's okay. Um, obviously I'd say for this sort of model board, this sort of B450 sort of you know more budget board obviously, um, I'd probably go probably like something like Absolute top end would be the 5800X 3D, I would say. It would be the absolute top end you'd want to put into this um, motherboard. I'd actually say the 5600X, or the 5600, Ryzen 5600, is probably the par sort of CPU for this sort of board. And the board, well, it's certainly the CPU that I would use for this board, if you weren't on a big budget. Now, I will have a video coming up, obviously, um, and that will be on the Ryzen 3 3100, and that's going to be perfect for, for this board as well, and it should actually support it out of the box as well. There should be the an, an up-to-date BIOS on this that will support third gen out of the box. Now, obviously, talking about that, um, if you are putting a sort of Ryzen 5000 series or the fifth gen Ryzen CPUs in, you might have to do a BIOS um flash on this now unfortunately it doesn't come with a bias flashback button on the front so you will have to put an older cpu in flash the bias to the new one and then put your new cpu in but anyway let's let's move on from that so as, as i said here we have our am4 socket so obviously 
uh, Ryzen processors. I think there are a couple of A processors or something that you have, but you're not going to use them really. But yeah, Ryzen first gen, second gen, third gen, fourth gen, five, fifth gen, all compatible with this motherboard, obviously. So you go right down to the Ryzen 1200 if you really wanted to, all the way up to potentially the Ryzen. 5950X, something, yeah, I think that's the, that's correct. Uh, we do have our CPU fan header here, so that's not, you know, that's just pretty much standard as, as you'd expect. You aren't going to get, unfortunately, you aren't going to get the ARGB support on here, so 5 volts, 3 pin addressable RGB headers aren't on this board, which is a bit of a bit of a downside, but it's okay. You know, you can potentially use the... 12 well the, the four pin 12 volt sort of standard or the old format rgb but i'll move on to that as we go along we have four dim slots and i believe that can take 128 gigabytes of ddr4 um up to well, i think that's about 4000 megahertz or so but i'll put it below all the specs of, of this mobile board obviously as well so you've got all that we do have our Dr. Debug LEDs here to show you if basically if the CPU isn't working or the DRAM isn't working or the VGA and then the final one is boot. So if you can get to the final light, which is boot, you have successfully booted up into Windows or Linux or whatever you're using basically. We do have our 24 pin main uh, PSU power connector obviously. Uh, to provide all your power for this board, so it's pretty standard. We have four SATA ports here, two of them which sort of face out towards the motherboard, and then two of them that face kind of away, sort of 90 degree from the motherboard, if you can see that on camera, hopefully. Um, but I will take some close-up shots so you might be able to see that a bit better. So with four SATA ports, you won't be able to fit like absolute like massive NAS or something like that if you were doing like some some kind of crazy six drive or even eight drive um you know like massive raid or something like that for a, for a nas system so you can't do that but four sata ports should be more than enough for most people especially nowadays as people use an m.2 so there's not really much need for that i don't think we have a front header for a speaker which is the jfp2 header and the jfp1 header is obviously right at the bottom there at the bottom right hand side for your front um for your front power for your power led for your reset switch power switch obviously and your hard drive led notifications like hard drive leds basically we do have our usb free uh front header right at the very bottom of the board here right next to the jfp1 which is your uh front headers um so that's that's kind of an okay location for it Sometimes it's up by the 24 pin, but I think it's actually better being there personally. And then next we have two USB 2 front panel headers, obviously. Um, this is okay uh, for obviously legacy support for uh, older cases, obviously, which was the previous case that we did last week, uh, which was the MSI Mag M100R. Um, so if you do have USB 2 ports on your the front of your case you will be able to use that and, and if you've got like an AIO or some kind of um, RGB fan hub or something which which uses that then you can use the you can use that as well for the USB 2 front header then we have some kind of header which in all honesty I don't know what's for uh, so we'll just move on from that then we have again a header which I don't think you're ever going to use so we won't bother with that then we have our four pin 12 volt RGB header just at the um, left hand side of the board, the far sort of left, or well, not quite the far left, the free free to, to the left. And then we have another system fan header. And uh, the total system fan headers that we have, I think, yes, there are only two, there's only two separate um, system fan headers and then one CPU fan header, which is a bit disappointing, but it's a micro ATX board, so you kind of have to expect that with a micro ATX board, but it is what it is. And then we have our front audio header as well, so obviously plugging in your your front audio headphone microphone jacks on your case, that's obviously for. Now moving to the PCI Express ports that we have, 
we have our 16 times um, 16 times PCI Express Gen 3 port here, which is like armored as well. So that's obviously going to give you a little bit of extra support for your graphics cards when you're plugging them in and when you're obviously pulling them out. So if you are one of those people who switches graphics cards a lot, you might want to have this sort of board for that uh, armor. Uh, we do have a M.2 slot here, which fits uh, NVMe drives for up to Gen 3. Um, obviously with B450, it's a limitation on the actual chipset that you can't use PCI Express Gen 4. So if you do have a PCI Express Gen 4 NVMe drive, you'll be able to use that, but it will be Gen 3 speeds. And same with your CPU, you only get Gen 3 speeds, even if you're using something like the Ryzen 5 5600X or 5600 or, uh, or the 5800X or what have you. You only get Gen 3 speeds rather than the Gen 4, that, which is actually supported in the CPU. But that's the limitation of B450, and you have to expect that. I mean, obviously, if you want that, you have to go to B4, you have to go to B550 if you want that Gen 4 support. But I think for most people doing budget boards, of budget builds, you just don't need that really. And then we have two PCI Express Times One ports here. So obviously things like Wi-Fi cards and what have you would be fine just to slot them down there, just to maybe fit maybe fit the Wi-Fi card at the bottom one there. So you know it's perfectly usable this board, and there's certainly you know more than it's more than enough for a good budget build. We do have our CMOS battery there at the very bottom as well. The second system fan header is actually just above the PCI Express uh, Time 16 slot there. So if you're using a back fan, you know, a fan at the back of your case, that will be for that one. And the, the fan header down here will probably be for your three uh, fans at the front or maybe two fans at the front or what have you. But obviously you will need a splitter for that because you'll only be able to use two there's only two fan headers, so you will need splitters if you've got any more than two case fans. So yes, let's move to the rear I.O. now. Um, a pretty basic uh, uh, rear I.O., but certainly more than usable. Hopefully, again, that does come up on the camera, but I will probably do close-ups as well, so that will give you a little bit of a better view at the front uh, I.O. ports here. So the first port that we have is a PS2 port. Not a PS2 console, <laughs> but PS2 port, which is like a, kind of like a legacy port for keyboards and mouse. Most people aren't going to use this, but it's there if you need to. If you're maybe doing overclocking and stuff, it's, that's kind of why it was there. We have two USB 2 ports at the front, which is kind of nice. And a total of eight USB ports at the rear I.O., which is actually quite good for a budget motherboard. We do have a legacy VGA port and a legacy... And a legacy DVI port as well at the front so if you are using integrated graphics you will have support for that and there is also a HDMI port as well so potentially you could fit three monitors up if you are running something like the Ryzen 5 5600G or 50 or maybe going up to the 5700G or even the 4600G you could even go to 3200G or even 3400G on this board as well if you were going to run integrated graphics but I think most people nowadays aren't going to do that. Another two USB 2 ports there just above that HDMI port and then we have four USB 3 uh, ports at the front I think they're USB 3.1 but I'll put them below all the details below so you can see the exact uh, specifications on, on the uh, rear I.O. And then we have our 100 megabits per second LAN port there or Ethernet port for your network obviously. And then we have a front I.O. with the front audio I.O. which consists of a microphone, headphone jack and then just a, another one as well if you, if you are going to use all three. But most people are probably going to use just the headphone and microphone, the green and the pink obviously very basic audio but you don't need anything special again this is b450 in a budget platform so i think that's more than usable for most people so guys i hope you like this little unboxing of the msi b450m pro vdh max motherboard obviously what you saw was it was a used board so your unboxing experience is probably going to be a lot better than mine it was all a bit funny with having random screws and stuff coming out but anyway I've got a few ra random extra screws to use, so 
always good to have I guess but yeah um, anyway I think that kind of concludes the video obviously please subscribe to see future videos from me uh, please like the video for the algorithm and obviously comment on what you think of this board and do you potentially look at this board or do you think B450 has kind of had its day and you probably need to go to B4, B550 or something else but I still think for budget builds the B450 platform is still a a really great platform to be on and it's, it's kind of just a legendary sort of platform now I mean AM4 it's going to go down you know it, it is what it's probably the best platform has ever been with computers I think and you know it's going to live on and people like me who are kind of budget enthusiasts are going to keep it living on and I hope it does live on because it's just been such a legendary platform but anyway that's 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 enough for me uh been an AMD shill <laughs> but anyway yeah um, I don't get sponsored by AMD by the way but anyway uh, yes let, let, let's wrap up the video there. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys in the next one all the best bye guys